Next on the list, I wanted to quickly mention these. I don't really know much about the artist. It's called uh, Tyrell, Tyrell or Tyrell Winston. Shows off his up and coming Reebok Club C collaboration. And if you're not familiar with the Club C model, that's the model that was kind of made famous or popularized by Jound. I think that might have been his first official footwear collab, if I'm not mistaken. They were pretty popular. And I don't understand why, because I see these Club C's and I just look, I just think they are dead. And I was just thinking now, actually, are these like the quintessential Caucasian male shoe? This look like the kind of shoe that, you know, if you're the kind of guy who rolls up his own cigarettes, who wears white socks with his trainers, who puts on the beanie right at the top of his head, who either smells like piss or smells like Tom Ford, who rides his bike everywhere, um, who likes to spend time in flipping Hackney down, just chilling on his own, um, who goes record shopping but doesn't buy any records, right? <laughs> that, that's a, this is what they kind of look like. They really look like that. Like you run your design agency from your laptop that's, that kind of points outside your window, you're employed by, you know what I mean? Like you never file your invoices on time, but you always complain about getting, getting back, being paid late. That's what they look like. They look like the quintessential white creative hipster shoe because I don't think I've ever seen anyone else wear them because they're so butters. Because I, when I think of white sneakers, there's not many that I would wear. And considering what they look like, why would I choose a Club C over a classic Air Force One in terms of shape? Like this shape is terrible, I feel like. It's got this weird spoony, U-E type of shape at the bottom. Um, there's too many panels on it for what it is. It's pretty low profile sneaker. It's got way too many paneling details, I feel like. And it's got this other weird thing too, where it's kind of sleek at the front of the toe box here. It's pretty sleek. You know, it's got a pretty um, narrow, what's it, short or small mud guard, right? So it's not the biggest shoe. But then for whatever reason on the top towards where you put your foot in next to the tongue and the eyelets, it kind of bulbs out. So it's kind of the opposite of a Jordan 2 Low. A Jordan 2 Low, I feel like it's sort of like chunky, but it's like chunky all the way through. Whereas this kind of has that fat thing at the top, but then it kind of slivets or goes a bit slim towards the, the front, which obviously doesn't help with someone like me who's got wide feet. And in general, it doesn't look very sleek when you're wearing them because it's the kind of shoe that should be wearable with a tux or a suit or a tailored trouser or a pleated trouser. But in actuality, when you try and put them on and try and make it work and try and freak it, it looks terrible from what I can see. It, could, it would look terrible unless you were somebody that was, you know, imagine you're my height, you're six foot, but you're blessed with size eight feet. You know I mean, you're going to look banging in these because size eight feet in most trainers when you're tall is always going to look great. But when you're my size foot, like a UK 10, sometimes 10 and a half, these are going to look like absolute boats. And then it got me thinking about Reeboks that I actually mess with because I think Reeboks in general are a waste of time. Um, what's the point of buying any of these shoes if you just go and buy another like I'd much rather buy a pair of Diodoras than they would go for a Reebok and I thought to myself oh you know what only Reebok I'd actually wear or I would consider wearing would be the Reebok Classic but I can't because of the area that I grew up in the connotation of Reebok Classics are always to do with you know far right flipping extremist guys and you know national front dudes and skinners and all that malarkey like, all those guys were the ones that used to wear Reebok Classics and they chase you around the hood wearing these things and kicking you and stuff and throwing stuff at you and whatnot and trying to chase your mum down the street like mad shit kind of big up all my friends who grew up in the custom house canning town era you know what I'm talking about right mad as well because most of those guys always had you know daughters that had flipping mixed race kids like it's always a common thing that happened which might explain why they hate you so much but that's the reason that's where i remember reboot classics and then the one i also remember are, are these the work reboot workouts with the icy blue soul and i remember those because one time back in the day ages ago when i was really young i remember bumping or walk bumping into or walk or yeah crossing paths with wiley um, I think it was maybe in Bo or somewhere around there. And you had a pair of these Reebok workouts on with the icy blue sole, but you had those with the kind of shark tooth sole or something, like jagged sole. And they looked so good. I'm not sure if it's called jaggy. So what's it called? Icy sole. Uh, what's it called again? Let's just say jagged, jagged sole. Oh, there we go. I yeah, found them. Yeah, these are the ones, aren't they? Are they the ones? Yeah, those are the ones I saw Wiley wearing. Yeah, these ones. They were so good up like in clo and again, this is back in the day, they were so expensive to purchase these. Like Reeboks were really a lot of money, like a hundred like more than a hundred, which is crazy because number one, my parents were never gonna buy me shoes more than a hundred pounds. And it was just crazy that you would spend a hundred, you know, more than a hundred pounds on Reeboks when you just get a pair of TNs or a pair of Air Max ninety fives or whatnot. It just didn't make any sense. 
Um, so Reebok kind of missed the mark on that one. And I kind of feel bad for Reebok too, because they've clearly got a lot of stuff in their archives. They're trying to, you know, debut new shoes and, you know, basically give updated versions of the classics and whatnot. But people just want the classics. I remember one time when I used to work for Nike, that being a thing, when we used to talk to people, because I remember, were they owned by Nike? Were Reebok owned by Nike at the time? I don't know what happened, but we had we had a lot of communication with people that worked at Reebok at the time. And I remember... Um, one of the guys that was in charge of the marketing or the seeding being really frustrated working there because he basically said that he, it's really hard to try and introduce new shoes to the market, especially to like influencers and whatnot, because whenever they have conversations with them and they sit down with them and they talk about the brand, the first thing they always mentioned are Reebok workouts or Reebok classics. None of them care about whatever new model they're trying to, you know, get some i get some research on or crowd source they don't care they want to even see the work the 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 workout or the robot classic they don't care about the new model they're trying to bring out they don't care about it at all and it must be super frustrating for them in that regard which might explain why margella decided to do their sort of tabby toe thing with the robot classic instead of making it in some new model or whatnot but yeah um Big up that guy anyway, whatever he's, what's his name? Uh, let me get up on here again, again. Is it this one? Yeah, big up uh, Tira Winston anyway. I'm not familiar with the guy. I think he's an artist, yeah, multimedia artist, widely known for his engineering pieces that centered around sports fan fanaticism, mostly known for his creating unique grids from used or deflated basketball. The New York, New York based artist is now embarking on a new creative venture. It's interesting though, isn't it, right? This guy is the one that did this, obviously in the background of this shoot. But he's the one that made this very really plain air, very plain shoe. I wonder why. Maybe because he's in the studio all the time. You wouldn't imagine someone that makes artwork like that would be making shoes that look so plain like this, isn't it? But again, big up him. I won't be wearing them because I fucking hate Reebok, but big up him regardless.